Hello, 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 Facebook family. How are you tonight? We have a great show for you tonight. We have an author tonight that's going to come on with us, Miss Rhonda G. Crowder, the author of Broken to Life. Awesome, awesome, awesome book. I love books that talk about um, individuals that can break through their circumstances. And I, I do believe that's what this book is going is talking about tonight. And we... Uh, as if you were a supporter, well, come on, we're going to show you what this book looks like, and we're going to have her to talk about this book and, um, and, and spread the word on how to come out of your brokenness to life. But first, we must do a disclaimer, okay? We need to let you know that this platform discusses any and all information that is known to the public and that our opinions of the hosts and guests. We use sources that are unconventional and conventional. Bridging through conversations is in no way to be offensive to any persons, groups, or organizations. It creates an open conversation needed to close gaps in topics others may not be willing to discuss. The information is alleged to others, but are our truths to having open conversation. Okay, so we're getting ready to start here and and be great in what we do here tonight. Okay. Hey, 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 my name is Diane. This is Spirit Love and we are here to have some great conversation about this awesome book, Tasha and I, and uh, and looking so forward to doing it. All right, Tasha. Hey, 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 y'all. What's going on? Happy Monday to y'all. Know who this is? This is Tasha Eggles. No, I do not know everything, but I love sharing with you what I do, do know. And y'all know been authentic, unapologetic, and, and sessions. So that's what we're going to have tonight. And I'm I'm excited about the guest tonight. A powerful woman of God. She, she we have become, become good out there. We don't talk every, every day. We don't have to. But one thing about Miss Rhonda, I can tell you, is that her spirit. Oh, she's going to reach out to her sister. And she's going to say what she, she needs to say. Yes, indeed. So her book, Broke Into Life. It, that title just, just gravitated. I mean, it struck my heart, and I, I gravitated. I know that there, there are some situations in my life that I had broken that brought me to. I'm just excited. I'm not going to go too much in it because I, I want her to introduce herself to you. I want her to tell you all about it, her, and I know that she's going to uh, speak from her heart, and it's going to be wonderful. Come to them because you don't know. You never can tell what's going to happen on this show with, with Spirit Love and myself. Because we'll break out in a song, a prayer, whatever we have. So just, just hold on to your seat. All right. Let's bring on. Okay. And guys, please, 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 we, we like to enforce uh, and say this every time we come on live. Place your questions out there. Place your comments out there, so we can let the um, so the um, the authors of the books, the author of the songs, or whoever we have on here, can answer your uh, your uh, wondering questions about you know who they are and what they're doing, and some things that we may not ask that you you know is just floating out there and needs to be asked. So please, please, please put your comments out here because we can see everything that you put out here. Uh, it comes up again live, so we can see it. And we're most definitely will place it up and ask the questions uh, for you so you can get your answers. So please, please, please put your questions and comments out there, okay? Without any further ado, all right, this is Ms. Rhonda Crowder. I hope y'all can hear. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Hello. How awesome. are you? Um, yes. <laughs> hi. 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 <laughs> Um, I y'all have to excuse me because I am in the car. My son is a soccer player. It's cold outside. I did some walking and then I came in here so I can fellowship with you all. So I am watching a scrimmage. <laughs> so I am the founder and author of Broken to Life, the founder of nonprofit organization Broken to Life as well. Um, wow. Ah. Oh. 
broken, being broken. Let me let, let me uh, just give you, I'm a mother of two, um, Jaden and Kayla, my son, as you just heard, he's a soccer player. Um, he's 11 years old and my daughter, Kayla, she's 23 years old and um, she is actually going out for, I don't know if I want to say this live yet, but we're praying. She's working on some some acting things in grad school. So just keep us in prayer uh, for her audition this weekend. <clears throat> And so, you know, I know we make our, our prayer requests, you know, make it known. And but some things you just got to keep moving in silence. <laughs> That's right. So, right. yes, ma'am. So, um, and again, I like I said, I am an author of Broken to Life. The Lord gave me uh, the book Broken to Life. I've always wanted to write. I graduated from North Carolina A&T State University in journalism. And I and Terry McMillan, B.B. Moore Campbell, Toni Morrison, all those great women and and everything, you know, just I used to sit and read books all the time. And I'm like, I want to write my own book, but I never knew what I wanted to write about. Um, and, you know, when I and when I went through some things and I could Hold on, wait understand, a minute. like, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going a little too fussy. I get excited. No, no, no. Me. Wait a minute. Let me put your book up, y'all. Oh. Okay, guys. Yes. That's yes, it. yes, yes, yes. That's it. That's it. Amazon. It. Go out. Amazon. Broken to life. Uh -huh. Amazon, guys. Go out and get it. Okay. All right. Go get it. Go get <laughs> right it, y'all. Yes. Because yeah. I want to care. Look, I want to care book now don't get me wrong <laughs> but you know i have my tablet everywhere because when i want to write now because sometimes i don't i don't want to mess up my books too fast so but, but i i just want to say first before you go into it because i know let's get ready to get popping all this <laughs> so my question to you miss mm -hmm. ron yes what was the inspiration behind I'm writing this book because I know you was getting ready. So, what is the inspiration behind Broken to Life? Well, the inspiration behind Broken to Life is um, I was in some tox in a toxic relationship. Um, I call them situationships, um, relationships, situationships. You know, dealing with family situations dealing with um, relationship, you know, dating. Um, and I just did not understand, I, you know, and, and it's not, and I can say this as a disclaimer myself, I don't pinpoint out anybody. People are gonna create their own opinions or what they think or what they assume. That's one thing you never wanna do with Rhonda. You never wanna assume. I'll tell you if I want you to know. So um, there were a lot of things that I had gone through that I did not understand. And I was trying to come to a place in my life of saying, I've had enough. And when I had enough, that was a point of me having enough and going through, I had a deaf, deaf situation. My father passed away. And then I came out of a relationship and I call it a live deaf situation. I cannot understand why in the world am I dealing with all of this when God said enough was enough. I went through a jail experience, um, feeling like I was just closed in, didn't understand why I was going through this because I'm like, this person's supposed to love me because I love this person. And in the process of losing my father um, at that time, I'm like, you know, on one end, and, I, and I'm, I'm gonna be honest, you know, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes the folks that really hurt us and the ones that we put all of our faith and hope and love in and, and you know, we put all of our emotions in and they hurt us or or family hurt us or anything like that. Sometimes we want we want to see that a little opposite. I'm just gonna be honest with you because that's where my head was sometimes. Sometimes you're like, God, why you didn't take them and you took the one I really love, you know what I'm saying? So can I be Ooh. honest with you? Oh, come okay. on with it. Okay, so in, <laughs> you in the process of <laughs> in the process of this, um, the Lord had to rescue me when I was in a jailed experience and I had to go through some things or whatever, go through that hurdle. Um, I was sitting there and God said enough. 
if you don't leave this alone, it's going to be 10 times worse. At that point, that's when I was broken. All I could say was our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. That's all I could say. Tears were falling. I was um, speaking to a police officer and the police officer was like, it's sad that some women, you go through different things um, and it's all pinned on you, but God had another plan. And sometimes God will allow things to happen for you to wake up. Mm -hmm. You're awake, but you're not awake, awake. You mm -hmm. see things. We go through situations and life circumstances and God has been talking to us all along. And he's been saying, don't go over here. Don't do this. Don't do that. And we're not, we're like, okay, God, okay, God. But we're trying to handle it in our own might and our own power. And so in the process of this, I just began to write. I did not know what the title of the book was going to be. I didn't even know I was going to write a book. I would wake up in the middle of the night and I just start writing. And then there were times where I just couldn't say anything at that time. I was going in my living room where my father passed away. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I went in there and I couldn't say a word. You know, we have this thing in, in the church. If I can't say a word, all I can do is wave my hand. I could mm -hmm. wave my hand. I couldn't say a word. I didn't know how to pray. I knew prayer was my strength, but it's like the Lord locked up my tongue because mm -hmm. God said, and I thought it was, sometimes we think it's the enemy that locks us up. Well, God, the devil don't want me to pray. He causing distractions and saying, sometimes that can happen, but sometimes God is trying to get your attention and God wants you to be quiet so you can listen to what he's trying to tell you. So you'll know how yeah. to maneuver through life. Absolutely. And life cycles. Absolutely. So yeah. broken to life came at that point where I said, God said, I'm breaking you. And that's where broken to life comes from. Wow. And you know what? what? You can question, because my second question is, what did you experience in your life that expired? the idea to write you say it let me just rewind because that was a real moment right there we don't the person that, that i love and that really love me and i want you to take <laughs> this person no like I, why you ain't, ain't take him and you know what let, let me just end with that now for me it was on the level of my five birth for me to live, the seed for me to live, he's still at the point in my life to raise me is no longer here. Mm. So I'm like, mm, mm, did you make a mistake? I mean, <laughs> no, but I'm just asking. So I understand. And, and what the thing about it saying. is, I truly the thing it about it, right, the thing about it is, is that what we don't understand also is that the same God that died on the cross, that the same God that sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for us, he died for the one that caused issues to us as well. Mm. And I mm -hmm. had to get an understanding with that. Yeah. And I'm like, mm. I want you to get him. I want you. God said, revenge is mine, said the Lord. So while we're sitting over here trying to make sure he or she get God, God has already set it up for you because the word of God says, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. So God said, did you forget who you were? in the process of all of this, mm. even though I want to get you, my getting you is not going to be getting God the same way God is going to get you. Mm -hmm. God can get oh. you in the manner of that you got to, you, you, you got to deal with that stuff eternally. You mm. never know. He can get you and it could be way down the line. I want a revenge. I want, I was hurt. I was pained. Who could do me like this? why would mm. you want to do me like this and the thing about it is is that some people have such a narcissistic attitude they want to mm. they like to see people hurt they yeah. those and i tell people even some girlfriends that i have spoken to dealing with narcissistic attitudes if you rebuttal back to them that's what they want because they get a kick out of it they get they feel yeah. muncho they feel they feel yeah. you know like a, a king or a queen when mm -hmm. you're dealing with narcissistic people and but then when you silence yourself they don't like to be ignored 
Yeah. Narcissist no, does not like to be ignored. Mm -hmm. They want all your divided, undivided attention because they want to be able to feel, like I stated, they want to be able to feel macho and like, oh, I still got her or I can still have a car. She's still going to take the time to have a conversation with me or he or she's going to do this or he's going to do that. So you have to be very careful in that area. I promise you. Broken to Life has been a blessing to a lot of people because they didn't understand. I even had ex-girlfriends from guys or whatever or a certain person that was dating. Their ex-girlfriends have come to me and said, how did you get out of it? How did you get out of it? Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting here looking like, you You asking me? <laughs> yeah. 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 You sure? You you. And I tell people, people that are you a therapist? No, I'm not a therapist. I just, I just been through some things. I'm mm -hmm. a witness. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you. So I say, if you want to come to me, you better be ready to come to me. I, the first thing I tell people, are you ready to do the work? Mm -hmm. If you're not ready to do the work, don't come to me. Cause I'm a dig in you and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to dig in you so good. <laughs> to the point to where you probably not going to like me for the moment. You're going to run away from me. But I wish someone, you know how people say, girl, I tried to tell you, or boy, I tried to tell you. They may have said something. We either didn't hear it at the time because we were so deeply in love, mm -hmm. or they said it and passed it mm -hmm. to everybody else, but never came to you directly. And mm -hmm. the thing about it is those same people that come back to you and tell you what so-and-so did or, or what she did or what he did to you, they don't forget those are the same people that was laughing while they were doing it and seeing what they were doing while mm -hmm. they were doing it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Takes me to my next question. Even though you were going through what you were going through and you said write a book one day, you know, because you you um, just love, love the name. So, but you didn't really know what it was going to look like. Mm -hmm. So at the title, after God spoke to you and told you what the name of the book is, and you began writing the book before you even, you know, got the name. But after and the pages and everything coming together. What will the highlight of that moment? The highlight of my moment was when I talked about trusting. I had a hard time trusting anyone. And let alone, we go in and we worship the Lord and we say, God, I love you. I worship you. I honor you. And I even had a hard time trusting God because mm -hmm. of all the things that was happening. Uh, it was like everything kept hitting back to back to back. And I said, when am I going to get a break? I was talking to my brother one day in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And he said, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, sis. He says, it gets worse before it gets better. Mm -hmm. And I was very reluctant at hearing that. I didn't want to hear Ooh. that. I because I'm always I want to speak life into it. If I whatever comes out of my mouth is what's gonna happen, what's gonna happen. But it got worse before it got better. And in the process, it took me to a place the trust zone showed me who was actually for me. Mm -hmm. The trust the, the trust, trust zone. zone took me, showed me who really cared about me who was in my corner who loved me and my circle got smaller even the girlfriends that i thought that were my friends weren't really my friends because mm -hmm. our our relationship got tested and tried and i started seeing you know how you you hang with somebody and you kind of see things but you kind of ignore it and you're like nah not them you know we like sisters no 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 so yeah. in the process of this I'm sitting here and I'm starting to watch the skeletons come open because as God began to elevate me into doing th the things that I needed to do in ministry, my book and different things like that, that's when and you started seeing, oh, I'm for you. I'm for you. Well, I want to write a book too. <laughs> or I want to do this too. And I want to do it. And I'm sitting here like, okay, well, go for it. I'm going to push you for well, I don't know what I want to write. Well, how did you do? Well, why did you do that? It's like 
are you serious? And then you started coming up against me. You started up against my children. You, you started doing certain things and saying certain things or, or befriending what hurt me or, then, or took what I went through and threw it right back up in my face. When you told me, um, you shouldn't have gone through this. You shouldn't have done this. This is how God, you know, God delivered you from this or God removed such and such out. And now you're taking everything that you said and you're putting it right back in my face. Hmm. Hmm. The mm. trust zone was my highlight because I had to totally learn how to depend on God. I could not go through life without depending on what God said for me to do. When God said, I need you to go to that building over there. I had come to a place in healing. And yes, I'm not afraid to say I went to counseling. I did go to counseling. I Amen. Did go to counseling. Amen. I'm not so, I'm not so holy to i'm no earthly good honey yeah. go sit down and talk to somebody that's right <laughs> right that's right have a conversation because the stuff Come that's on. in your head it could trigger you to be somewhere because mm -hmm. i mean all of us are slew away from the person that really hurt us that we put all our emotions in like i, I could have been somewhere and my children would have never seen me before yeah anymore yeah. you know and so like i said i had to come to a place like my faith had, my faith strengthened. In that trust zone, that trust factor, my faith began to strengthen because I began to also learn who I was. And I had to trust myself. Rhonda, it's okay to go to the movies by yourself. You don't have to be afraid. Mm, it's right. okay to take a blanket, take a pillow. If you want to go to sleep, go pay for the same movie again, watch it again. Now you're awake. Mm -hmm. Now you got your little popcorn, whatever. I did those things. It's okay yeah. to trust yourself to send yourself flowers. You don't have to wait for no man to do anything for you. If you want to get in your car and travel to Georgia and go see some friends or whatever the case may be, get in your car. You don't have to be afraid. God said, Lo, I will will be with you always until the end of the earth so god said i just want you to love yourself it's okay mm -hmm. to do this by yourself i'm with you i'm your date you mm -hmm. don't have to get you don't have to worry about getting stood up with me you don't have to worry about me talking about telling your business if you come to me baby i promise you i am not going to let anybody say anything to you out of the way i'm not going to let anybody hurt you because everything on the outside i'm getting ready to close you in just me and you i need you to trust every move i tell you to make some of those moves, I call myself a wild card. Some of those moves that you're about to make in your life. Mm, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, some of the moves that you're about to make in your life. Nobody will be able to say, I told you to do that. I need you to go on your own. I need you to follow my voice. When you follow my voice, everything shuts out. I'm going to put you in this box, but the box is going to be me and you because when I started, when I start throwing the walls down that you've been dealing with and that you've been going through, people are going to really see who I am in you. <laughs> And then you'll be able to be free. You'll be able to live. You'll be able to say, I don't want to go there today. I don't want to do this today. I want to do, I because I had, I used to follow what everybody told me to do and I wasn't happy. Mm. So come, the trust factor, on. the trust yeah. factor was it what I even said, I don't want to do this. I, you know, I, I even my, my fiance, I am engaged now. <laughs> Congratulations. There were th <laughs> Okay. So <laughs> that's what God, that's what the trust zone did. But I came to a place when I would go out on on a date or, or so like that and they would say, Do you want to do this? Well, I don't want well, why don't you do this? Well, why are you I said, I don't want to do that. And I don't have to settle for anything. God told me I can have anything I want to have. If you if the word of God gives you clarity. If ye ask in my name, I will give it to you. I can have anything I want to have. I'm a king's, I'm a queen, a king's kid. And God can say, if I don't want to do it, I don't have to do it. Yeah. Trust factor yeah. was my That's wild right. card. That's right. That's I love it. I don't know why yeah. you ain't got no t-shirt. 
sure what that's saying on there. Wild card. <laughs> I'm a wild card. Fear love. You got your book all um uh, on and talk to us. Uh, I was I was gonna say something about the the trust factor thing. I'm, as a matter of fact, that's your uh, chapter six. You yeah. know, in in the trust, <laughs> and I like that that very first verse. Girl, I be quoting that verse all the time. Proverbs three and five: Trust God, uh, mm -hmm. trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thy own understanding. And I heard it, I, and I've heard that so much into what you're saying you know, tonight that you, you might have in the beginning, you know, trust in yourself and you thought that you could make it on your own, but it took trusting in God and leaning on him. And he began to direct the path in which you needed to go in. And I really, I, I really, and I like the whole book, don't get me wrong now, but this trust, <laughs> but this trust chapter is so important, important mm -hmm. to, uh, to getting where God would desire for you to be. Yeah. you know, in life. And, and, it, and, and that's what it's going to take, you know, when you're going through things, especially going through a narcissistic, you know, girl, you got to right. really trust in God when you got somebody like that hovering Hello. over you, you know, Hello. and stuff, you can't lean on nobody, but God, you okay. know, to bring you out. And I, I truly, um, I truly love that, that chapter. And then I like the, the, um, the chapter, your daddy's, girl you know and and how much you know you you and your father you know had in uh, mm -hmm. the, the the compassion and stuff that i that i read within that that you had mm -hmm. and uh and that that played a big role in your life but i really love that chapter six that chapter okay. six that trusting you got you you there's no way in this world that you can make it without trusting God to lead God and direct you into the area that you need to be in. And I'm, and I kudos to you. I, I commend you for, you know, trusting God to bring you out of the things that, that you're going through. And then for being so honest and so authentic and being unapologetic about, you know, what you had to go through to get to where you are now. You know, a lot of people leave that in the closet and won't ever bring it out to help somebody else. I was at this mm -hmm. service yesterday and this going right into what you're you're saying and one of the young one of the young people that he was the uh bass player, bass guitar player at the church and he was just feeling he was just so into into the service and the the pastor didn't get to preach, right? And everybody was getting up testifying. He was just up there and he was just scrumming. He was just moving around in his seat. And he just, it was just like, he just could not stay still. Right. And he got mm -hmm. up and he said, I just couldn't stand my seat. I just got to say this. I got to say this. And I was kind of shocked because he was the age of my kids. I'm thinking, oh, well, my kids won't get up and start talking like that. But anyway, <laughs> so, so he got up and he started talking about these things, about the things that, you know, uh, you are dust. He, he didn't say you are dust, but I'm going to paraphrase what he said. You know, you need to say your do. You need to share your testimonies because your testimony is not for you. It's for somebody else. And it's to help somebody to maybe detour from some of the things that they're going through in life because you didn't testify and you didn't told them what you went through. And then they know how to trust God and come another direction. And then it will begin to uh, stop some of these generational right. curses that That's we right. have if we begin to get out go in our closet, clean mm -hmm. out all that stuff that we got in our closet and That's start right. telling people about what you then went through and be unapologetic exactly. about it exactly. and be free as though you say you are be free in it, be free and God has made us free, right? right. So we exactly. are free and free when we trust him and we know which way to go with him, right? That whatever we go through and whenever we share it and, and, mm -hmm. and just be authentic about it, who had your side? God got you. God got you. And it's going to be a trickle effect to help somebody mm -hmm. else. So that trust, you got, and you got to trust God too, to be able to talk about That's the right. mission you came through. You know what I mean? Exactly. So really, exactly. Help, really commend you. I really appreciate that in I your book you, that I'm, to, I'm about another one and share it with somebody else. But I, I, I really like it. that chapter six. Again, the whole thing, but that chapter six is the base of where right. you are right yeah. now. Mm-hmm. And, 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 you know, a lot of people don't understand that, you know, you got to be like when you, when we were born, we didn't, you know, we, of course, we don't understand we're babies and stuff, but 
when we grew up with our parents or a single mom or, you know, I had both of my, I was, you know, blessed to have both of my parents in the home, but, you know, who did you trust? You trust your parents because that's all you know. And so when God had to rejuvenate who I was, because I planned out my, my life was planned out on what everybody else thought it should be. Okay. Mm -hmm. You go to college when you're at school, you're going to find your husband and you're going to come home. You're going to get a good job. You're going to then, but my life was turned at 18 years old. I got pregnant and I was embarrassed because, and then I'll, and then I, I, again, I've always been that wild card. I had come to a place. I was like, I don't care what nobody thinks. I'm pregnant. Okay. The 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 Ron, you know, I used to hear this. The Rhonda Crowder, oh my gosh, oh my god, can y'all believe it? You know, she is great. I can't believe it because you know my mom is prissy, okay? <laughs> and she <laughs> and you know, images, images, everything. Yeah. And so I, I my mom is like another Diane Carroll on on uh a different world. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I could be probably the Whitley Gilbert, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so you got this girl over here talking about she's pregnant at 18 what oh wow we don't do that <laughs> so i mean you know everything came backwards for yeah. me um and i i i i even when i went to college you know i i was engaged at the time to my daughter's father and it was i i shunned myself i wanted to pledge i wanted to you know do some other things and stuff. I was in the choir, but I was so shunned away. Well, you know, she's going to go to A&T and she's going to meet other guys. And, you know, so I stayed in the room because I wanted to please him. Um, I, I didn't go a lot of places. So it's like, I deprived myself from just enjoying myself because of what somebody else was feeling or somebody else's insecurities. Mm -hmm. So I had to like, I, it didn't start from just a broken relationship. It started as a child doing what everybody else wanted me to do as long as I, cause I used to find myself, even with my children, I used to find myself say, well, what do y'all want to do? What do y'all want to do? And yeah. whatever in my, I would have in my head what I wanted to do. But then I would always say, well, what do y'all want to do? So I would go along with what they wanted to do so they could be happy. But I'm still over here like, dang, I should have gone over here. I really want to do this mm -hmm. and I really want to do that. But they didn't know that. Yeah. So I had to come to a place to say, you know what? No, mommy wants to do this and we can do this afterwards. Right. Or whatever, because this is what I want to do. No, don't call me. Mommy's having her time. I love you. Uh, you're 23 or you're 11, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I have that because I mean, I had to come to that place. Yeah. Even when people would say, can you come over here? Can you do that? Even in the church? Well, when you get married, well, when you get married, <laughs> well, how long you been married? You know, you asking me all these questions. Let me ask you some questions because y'all getting in my business. Let me get in your business a little bit. You mm -hmm. know, um, I, I just. I had to just come to a place to where I said, I can't do this no more. That's right. Because right. God, and God said, baby, look at me. Everywhere you go, I want you to look at me because I'm going to get you through this. It's like a maze. I'm getting ready to come. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you over here because I'm going to show you what else you can do. Oh, I know how to travel. Oh, I traveled all the way to Maryland, uh, D.C. by myself. Oh, I, 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 oh, okay. I got a car. And I didn't have to have a co-signer. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, you know, that may be mediocre to somebody, mm -hmm. but that wasn't mediocre for me because I always had my parents to co-sign and I always was at everybody else's beck and knee. But to right. be able to go out here, oh, I can go out here. I can go over here and do that. I can go to the movies by myself and I don't need to call nobody. Oh, I can go. Oh, I go get me. I found. Oh, I want some ice cream today. Or I want to just go and get me a seafood boil. And I can sit here by myself. And now I'm going to go ahead and tell you now. Oh, she's an evangelist. Let me say this. I will have a little glass of wine every now and then, but I'm in my own sanctified place. Okay. Okay. Got water into wine. Now, people say, well, you're not supposed to be drinking. And that's the sin. The word of God. We ain't worried about drinking. Uh -uh. 
Now we've been trying to says, we've been trying to get these scriptures right with these folks now. So you the right. word of God <laughs> said right. The word of God says be not drunken with wine. Now you yeah. know you got a drink a drink a drinking problem. Then you don't need to touch that. But I don't right. have a drinking problem. Right. I may have a little glass of wine just to kind of relax for a minute. And I'm a Moscato girl. And um, so I'm a dainty, a dainty girl, okay? Yes, you are. So, <laughs> so if I decide to have a little glass of wine with my seafood boil, I can do that. Do I do that every day? No, honey, I'll be somewhere asleep every day, okay? Because no, it winds right. a sister down. <laughs> so, um, and I'm still saved and I still love the Lord. There are a lot of people, and, and let me go ahead and say this while I'm there. Sometimes it's okay to go out the box. God is not looking for you to stay in the church 24 hours of the day. God is not looking for you to be in Wait, the church. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm sorry. Hold up. No, no, no. No, stop. Repeat that again because somebody that's sitting way in the back. You hear that statement? They way in the back or they on the side. God that, both. does not. God was a carpenter. God sent his son Jesus. Jesus was a carpenter. He walked the streets. He walked. How do you expect a woman with the issue of blood? She wasn't in the church. She wouldn't. The mm -hmm. Lord didn't say, lift your hands and tell God, thank you. Let me prophesy to you. Because some people prophesy and some people prophesy lying. Some people prophesy in a check in their hand. And <laughs> they're telling you, if anybody prophesied to you and say, y'all can condemn me, whatever you want to, to God be the glory. But don't, don't be foolish. If somebody mm -hmm. prophesy and you say, well, all I have is my duke energy money or i got my um my rent money god said mm -hmm. give that and he gonna give you that is an ignorant person yeah yeah you're right about that do not give your rent your power bill mm -hmm. your car payment god does not operate in that manner now some people may feel well the lord told me to give that eight hundred dollars and that was my rent money and got and i got blessed i got a check in the mail yesterday every prophecy does not mean you get a check That's your right. prophecy is right. only your confirmation and it could be the wealth of what you yeah. got going on i don't have to have 15 million yeah. now would it be nice yeah. that 1.1 million billion dollars in the mega millions thank you lord that would be <laughs> nice right now in the name of jesus that part give me the numbers hallelujah so, let me go in numbers where's my word let me go in numbers <laughs> <laughs> so like at the end of the day like don't be an ignorant christian yeah or just an ignorant person and doing things like that but moving back you know when, when it concerns the things of god and he tells you to do something do it. Yeah. Do it. I I promise you, you don't have to be in the church in order to get what God is telling you to do. When Jesus, with the woman with the issue of blood, as I was saying earlier, like I said, she wasn't standing up in front of the church and lifting our hands. That baby was in the crowd. They didn't even know who she was. Yeah. Come on. She doesn't even have a name. Mm. All she did was touch the hem of his garment and everybody that's trying to run up in his face and trying to figure out who or who he Come who on. he was and he's a miracle. He was like, wait a minute. He had a connection, a divine connection. So when you learn how to trust God in chapter six and you have a divine connection with the Lord, even if you're not saying anything. Even if you're not, mm. even if you're just on your knees and nothing can come out of your mouth because God said, I just want you to hear me. I want to talk to you. I'm mm -hmm. putting you in a, I'm putting you in my own Holy Ghost feel, spiritual coma to where you're laying on the floor, but you can't get nothing out because you've been talking all this time. You've been fussing all this time. You've been cussing all this time because you're hurt, you're pain, you're trying to figure it out and you don't understand. Yeah. Yeah, you done got Wody and everybody and you ready to tell everybody what it is, how it is, what it's going to be. Now, I did tell the Lord, if I can't tell the truth, I don't want it. Right. Right. So don't judge. Don't say, say oh, she said a bad word. Girl, you done said 15 bad words in your head in one sentence, whether they came out or not. This is why God sent his son Jesus to redeem you from your sins. So let's come real. Yeah. 
Let's be real. At the end of the day, when she touched the hem of his garment, he wanted to know who touched me. God right. silent, her silence, moving in silence, gave her the trust zone that she needed to have. So because she knew what she wanted, she knew what she wanted to be healed from. So when you begin to trust God and everything, God mm. will show you who you are. Mm. I have a, and my book is talks about who are you? Who yeah. are you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you like to do? Who are you? What do you like to, what do you like to smell like? What do you, what mm -hmm. fragrance fits your skin, your chemical balance? What, what, how do you like to, it's okay, go get your hair done yeah men go get your hair cut you've been there are men who are in broken relationships you know i get so sick and tired of hearing women talk about we have all these women conferences god is gonna send you a man and he gonna have this and he gonna have that he gonna be he gonna be buff he gonna be this he gonna be tall and dark but i said god i want me a man i want him tall dark and handsome and different but god sent me a man that was just a little bit taller than me I might be a light shader than me. I might be a light, a little light shader. And some people, once they see my last name change, they go add. I've had people to say, and yes, he is, he is of a different faith. Okay. okay. All right, we threw that out there. I'm gonna go ahead and crush some people's lives for two <laughs> seconds. You don't know what God is doing. That's right. I dated a Christian. He cheated on me profusely. Woo! He lied to mm. me profusely. He hurt my feelings profusely. He took me out of my character and then I allowed him to take me out of my character profusely. But then the Lord said, I'm sending you someone who will know how to treat you because of the principles. Are you converting? Did I say I was converting? Well, you know, you got to be, you know, and he's a Muslim. You know, you got to be, uh, if you date them, you got to convert. I said, who said so? God is still God. God is still God. Don't nobody change my religion for anything because I'm the one that's got the answer to God. I'm the one that's got to go to heaven. Yeah. God so you're not just because of who you are. You just man, honey. You yeah. That ain't nothing to me. I still yeah. I still profess and I still say I love Jesus. I'm like Eve on barbershop. I, I drink my apple juice and I'm down with Jesus and we do. <laughs> and that's the first thing I said to him. And he and, and the thing about it is we pray together. Yeah. We fast together. He's taught me more than a lot of things that I didn't even understand because we're so ignorant as Christians. We don't want to understand. God is bringing unity in a lot of outside That's things. That's it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And yes. you don't yes. know a force that we are reckoned with if we learn how to just come together. Mm -hmm. All of these the, the religious purposes, all of that. We're so divided as a country, as a people. But then yeah. you got people who love to come together and just worship God. You know, Ron, you are so right about that. When you when you were talking about that, and I kind of figured he was a, a Muslim. My, the first thought that came to my mind, you know, is that God is beginning to mend the broken pieces that we have in all of these different, you know, religions. Because I always think about, we used to sing this song, I think, <laughs> where they still sing it in funerals all the time. You know, when we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that would be when we all see Jesus, we're seeing the victory, right? And I'm thinking, right. how are we going to do that? We can't even do that here. <laughs> we can't even do that here <laughs> on earth, you know, and what, what, what's so, and, and I mean, they'd be excited. You know, if you ever been to a funeral and they sing, I mean, you get excited, you know, singing that song. But if you can't get along with your fellow um, sister or brother in the different religion, a group where and we all believe God mm -hmm. and right. God right. is Jesus and Jesus is God, right? And the Holy <laughs> Spirit is for all people, right? right. So right. why can we just can't get together and and do that thing together? I went to uh we did a um 
I don't really know what it was called. I, I always say a come together, you know, mm-hmm. with the Muslims and the different um, different religions at this uh, the, at one of the temples out um, on the plaza here in Charlotte. And I'm telling mm-hmm. you, that was the best thing that I had ever seen before, you know, instead of listening to what everybody else say about, you know, other people come together and find out for yourself, you know, about right. the different right. things. And I'm a right. chaplain at, in the hospitals and mm-hmm. I, I'm, I intermingle with all different, you know, religion. And I'm going to tell mm-hmm. you when I, when I tell you, I have a good time with all different kind of religions. I, I love have a it. good time. With all I different kind of religion. I love it. Yeah. And they are so positive. They speak positivity. They right. speak purpose. Yeah. They don't you and they and when they see one another, they greet one another yeah. in love. Yes. But we yeah. are Christians. <laughs> and we tear each other down so fast. Yeah. We judge one another so fast. It's yeah. sad. Yeah. But we talk about it's okay. Well, we we gotta uh we gotta put our church shoes on now, you know. Or if somebody come to church and and they come off the street, we looking at them like, ooh, they stink. Ooh, da da da. But then they, I I have literally seen my fiance just watching clothe someone. Someone have been in the hospital and just because of his character and everybody is not the same oh no i'm, I'm no, gonna say this no, everybody is no, not the same there's no. some ratchet folk out there too yes okay? ma'am regardless of what religious purpose you are no. yes but ma'am <laughs> i've seen him i've seen him nurture and be there for people just because of the love that's in his heart yeah. and that's what wove me in right. i was very reluctant at first because I was <laughs> and I my sister in love she said to me she said Mm-mm-mm. she said we're not gonna give this up she said what I see in this I was like girl you know what you're talking about she said Mm-mm. this is it yeah. my brother my mother this is it this is the one okay yeah yeah, see, girl, bye. <laughs> but as I, I am grateful for what the choice that God gave me, because I can say, and everybody had a little situation because we're learning each other right. here and there. We're learning each other. But one thing I can say is, I feel in my spirit, I feel in my heart that I made a right choice. Yeah. And, you know, and I like the way you you brought you brought it out. And gosh, we're going to have to do we have to do this um, a session on like the different religions and stuff like that, because I when I was getting my first master's, I met I met a young man. And uh, for some reason, I don't know why we was talking about funerals. I have no idea where that came from. Right. <laughs> and um, and then he said, well, it's my sister. You know, so what are you going to do? And I told him, I said, well, I'm gonna be cremated. I just, I ain't taking, I'm not putting all that money in the ground, right? I'm gonna be cremated, right? He said, oh, no, 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 That's sister. We're not gonna, <laughs> he said, sister, we're not gonna have that for you. What I want you to do, I want you to come on over to my house and we will bury you and we will not charge you all of that money to put in the ground. And I said, well, you know, I'm not of that, you know, he said, I don't care what you are, you just come to me. And you let me know. And I said, I'm going to be dead. So how am I going to come to you? He said, no, you let me know right now. <laughs> you let me know right now, you know, what you what you want to do. So when uh, when you say that, I think about, and this is all talking about your book too, because this is still, it's all mm-hmm. in the realm, you know, right. of of brokenness because broken broken life period right and in in all mm-hmm. different sections of life right and when mm-hmm. when he said that I thought about all I could think about when he left you know and he you know he greeted me and gave me a you know a hands up you know and all that stuff right mm-hmm. and all I could think about was when I was looking I was saying God and they be saying all of these things about how we can't intermingle with you guys and how you won't have us there and you know with them and just going on and I said and just think about how 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 many people are broken because of that because they might have wanted to go that way right and they didn't go 
that way because mm-hmm. down through the generations, you know, what they said, you know, in that terms. And that's what like in even being a Catholic, even being Methodist or Amy right, Zion right. or whatever, you know, all of those different religions. Very a lot serious. of people are broke because of what right. other people have said instead of finding out what's the what chapter is that, finding out who you are and who you can be in right. life and what you can do. You know, in life, mm-hmm. you running off of somebody else's uh, shoestring instead of running off mm-hmm. of your own. And I consider that a, your, your child mentality, because like yes. you said earlier, Rhonda, you were so everybody did everything for you, which that same way to have right. me when I was coming up. I don't think I really grew up until I had my last child when he when I was in my early 30s, you know, because my parents and my grandparents, you know, they were always there and they always made sure, you know, that we were all right. So now, you know, we have come of age and now we're thinking for ourselves. We've been through some things and we begin to think for ourselves and trust mm-hmm. God instead of man all the time. Now we we trust right. God and we and we intermingle with other things to, you know, to just just mm-hmm. reach out there and 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 right. and know different things instead of just staying in this one little old box. Right. Exactly. Like we got to we got to break loose from the box right. because the box don't do us no good. All it do is what is that thing called when you doing counseling and you always um, in this thing? Uh, in other words, you just always going to be there. You always going to be there. And when the box move. You're not even going to know how to come out of that that situation mm-hmm. because you're so used to being in the box, right? Mm-hmm. Right. And and I and I had to learn that you know learning who I was, what I desired to do in that whole sector. It took me, I'll say, throughout this whole process, even in, and that was a part of my healing. It took me eight years. It took It'll me begin. eight years. It is. Yeah. And when I said last year, um, even before I met my fiance, if there were times where I just, I would probably be sitting in my car like I am now. And I would be like, <sighs> and I would literally feel a wave of healing. I would feel a wave of, you know, I ain't worried about that no more. You know how we talk about certain things and we have it embedded in our heart, but we didn't believe it because mm. we were saying it, but yeah. we didn't really believe it. Oh, but I, ain't, I don't want to talk to him no more. I don't want to date him no more, but we still trying to talk to him. We wait for his phone call. We're trying to see if he going to call. We're trying to see if he looking on. You're probably looking on Facebook and seeing if you see if he saw your pictures on the storyline, even if he didn't compliment. You better call you out people. <laughs> <laughs> Call up, I mean, you probably try, <laughs> you're trying to see who's looking at that storyline. A lot of people post up on that storyline to see who watched it, who yeah. really watched it. And the people that you thought mm-hmm. that you was going to comment, they didn't even comment, but they want to they want you to comment on that stuff. But never lie, nevertheless, you. <laughs> But the thing about it, thank God I don't get all into Facebook like that. It is not. I'm, I'm yeah, no, that's right. <laughs> I don't get into all of that, <laughs> you know. Um, but one thing I can say is I had to really, I'll say this, even with talking about my fiance before I met him, I said, God, if I never get married, I'm okay. Yeah. I am okay. Mm-hmm. I said that one time before, but I didn't believe it yeah. because I was trying to psych myself out mm-hmm. so God can go ahead and send me what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, boo, boo, I know you. <laughs> but God gave me, I was content. I said, God, I said, I am content with where I am. Right. And if I never get married, I am okay. Okay. I'm content with just me and God mm-hmm. and my children. Of course, soccer and anything else that I had going on, I was fine. And then all of a sudden, that probably was two weeks prior or a week prior. And then that's when I met him. <laughs> he just showed up right on time. You just needed to say what you needed to say. 
Yeah, he may not come when you want him, but he's always right on time. Oh, <laughs> girl, don't make us oh, pop. Girl. Don't make us break out in a song here. <laughs> but no one well, who you are late a lot. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's I true. am so elated. Ronnie, look, you don't say some stuff that I'm like, goodness gracious. I mean, Lord, come on. Oh, it's time for a you just have to be silent. That's that's <laughs> hard for a lot of people to do. But I want sure. I would love for you to uh, let the people know, let the audience know, those that will be be watching the replay, let them know where you at any events, anything that's coming up, you know, so you do and cheer you on and all that great stuff because this this is so exciting. And it's okay if I'm not, but I just want to go ahead and just ask this question. All right, you're okay with that. I want to be a flower girl. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be a flower girl? Concert. Look, I had to be five. You trying to take the flower girl? You trying to take her? You trying to take her girl spot? What in the world? You bold. Look at you. Look, you know what, to be, Look I have decided, decided, uh, uh, a lot of people are, are kind of like question marking me because they were like, I cannot believe I'm not having any bridesmaids. No groomsmen. I, I have two junior brides and I have three little flower girls. It's my simple. son, his son, and my son, and very simple. Be and, and I did that on purpose. Mm -hmm. I did that you don't need on purpose. Mm -mm. And I, 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 I put it like this, I did it on purpose. And because you are really, when you do things like that also, you will really see the friends that are really going to be there for you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. You Absolutely. you really gonna see if even if I'm not this person, this is what you mean to me because I'm happy and I thank God that He has placed cer certain ladies in my corner to be like, what you need? Yeah. If you need anything, let me know. I want to do this. I want to do that. They've designated themselves. Tasha, you can be a flower girl if you need to be a flower. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna be a grown yeah, flower, yeah, yeah. Girl. Oh, flower, flower girl. Yes, ma'am. Well, let, oh let the people God. know what we can. Oh, awesome. You well, let, let everybody know what crazy. you got going on. <laughs> you know, Wait a minute before you do it, Rhonda. Before okay. you do it, um, I thought I, I thought I heard you say something about we needed something about a conference, right? But I just want to put out there that I am trying to put together um, a freedom retreat, freedom retreat co slice conference, whatever you you know, however you wanna. Okay you know, said, but it's all about what you're talking about and your book and stuff. And I, I did, I just did a poetry book that basically talked about the same thing. And uh, if you don't mind, I think I might call on you. So when you get married, uh, we're going to do shoot, we're shooting for 2024. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, we're planning engagement party and all that good stuff uh, sometime this year. So we have not designated that. We have so much going on. So we um, haven't designated that time yet, but you will know. Okay. Well then, since it's going to be 2024, you can, it's, this conference is going to be this year sometime. So. Okay. Great. Great. Yeah. Great. Okay. Now great. give us your tidbits. Well, um, like I said, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Broken to Life, or officially Rhonda Crowder. Um, I am, and you can go on amazon.com, purchase Broken to Life. Um, I am uh, working on a prayer and praise, excuse me, a prayer and worship gathering. And it's going to be very intimate. Um, you know, I don't care if it's 20, 25 people. We're going to worship and we're going to pray and there'll be different prayers going out so that you know for whatever anyone needs because we're starting in the new year and we yes. need we all need prayer especially in yeah. these trying times inflations and different things like that so yes uh the next thing um 
I did say I needed to rest. Um, broken to life is is odd. Um, hopefully next year after wedding and stuff, I will be planning a retreat. Um, I would like to go out of town. I would like to do something, you know, let's get, let's get on a bus, a party bus or something. And just, I don't care if we don't do anything, but go to the mountains. Let's go. Let's have fun. Mm -hmm. So, um, there are a few things that will be coming up and those things will be posted on my page as time progress. Um, you know, I will be starting my lives, uh, my prayer lives back very soon. Um, so just stay tuned. It's just a lot of things that I will be doing. I'm working on releasing another song, um, which yeah. is called Big God. So we're working. Okay. Look at it. Okay, Tasha, well, you tell me she sings too. Look at it. <laughs> I'll tell you all that good stuff. <laughs> Look at there. Girl, you come on here. We could do a few things right here on this live. Get us a good sing on. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Well, we're most definitely going to be keeping in uh in contact with you. And I, I just want you to know that I have I truly enjoyed uh you tonight, and I truly enjoyed right. your book. And again, that chapter six will stand out. Uh, awesome. with me because you know the again the only way that we can get uh get a breakthrough is that we we most definitely have to you know truly trust god and yeah. uh and 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 best blessings to all that you dive into you know in this 2023 and 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 beyond uh yeah. with your life yes absolutely you thank you so much much Rhonda for being here at that guy You're welcome. connected us when he did because Honey, he he showed out and grateful for those yes. moments. I really am. Yes. I really, really am. Everybody to know, get the book, Broken to Life. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, get it, get it, get it. I get believe it, it I will bless you. All. you. I believe it will be. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. Well, this is Tasha, a.k.a. T.C. Dose. No! thing but i love sharing with you what i do know and i just shared with you one under crowd author of broken to life and ceo to it corporation yeah. yes the non-profit <laughs> yeah. yes spirit, spirit love all Don't right this is spirit love <laughs> this is spirit love diane and I love you and there's nothing in this world that you can do about it, but love me back or pretend like you don't love me, but I know you do. Ooh. I most definitely love to all that's out there. Uh, TC knows. Rhonda, again, bless you, sweetheart. And we most definitely will be uh, following you and, and all that you do and support you. Okay, um, because you. there was one thing about uh, us women, we need to make sure that we we standing at the door with our fellow uh, women right. of the world, because we all need each other, whether we believe it or not. We need each other to yeah. to make it through. And I'm talking about genuinely, you know, needing and loving each other unconditional uh, and stop trying to pull everybody down from the barrel. Just begin right. to lift them up and bring them over with you. OK, exactly. so exactly. thank you. Thank you, thank you so very much, and again, much love to you all. Be blessed, be blessed, be blessed, be blessed. I love y'all, love you. Good night, good night. Good night.